Hi guys, okay, so this is going to be the cell respiration lab tutorial. Um, we're going to start the lab tomorrow, and you're pretty much just going to get used to the setup of it first, which this is a picture of it. In fact, actually, I took this page from your cell respiration um, lab packet that you guys need to print out. So this is what it looks like. You have your three vials, right, and then you're going to set it up like this in a water bath. Okay. Um, so just as a quick kind of, I just want to go over it really quickly before I talk to you about how to fill out the pre-lab data table. You have three different vials, right? One of them has germinating peas in it, which if you don't know what germinating means, it just means that they're pretty much ready to grow. And so um, you have germinating peas in here that they've had water added to them and they're ready to grow. Then in the second vial, you have um, non-germinating peas, or we call them dry peas. And then you also have those with some glass beads. And that's actually because dry peas are smaller than germinating peas. So we use the glass beads as a way to control for the volume. Um, so then that way, both the volumes are going to be equal in these vials. And then the third vial, you have just regular glass pe glass peas, sorry, glass beads, and that's going to act as your control. Um, and so the little air spaces in between the beads, actually, that's not going to be due, that's not going to be air that um, is due to changes in metabolism or changes in oxygen consumption or anything like that. That's actually just going to be due to um, changes in pressure or temperature. So just keep that in mind because that's something that we will have to subtract out when we do our calculations for the table. Okay, let me get to, here we go. So I actually made another copy of the pre-lab. It looks like this, cell respiration pre-lab. And I made it so that I could write on it, which I've already started filling out for you guys. Um, okay, so here is the data table that I wanted to talk to you guys about. So hopefully what I said earlier helped you just kind of picture a little bit more easily what it is you're really going to be doing tomorrow. Um, so just to let you know, here's your data table and you've got, there's two different water baths. You have a 25 degrees Celsius water bath, which is room temperature, and then you have a 10 degrees Celsius water bath, which is an ice water bath. And so for the lab, you guys are actually going to only be doing one of these. So you're either going to do the 25 degrees Celsius or you're going to do the 10 degrees Celsius water bath. Um, and then you're just going to share your data with your classmates. But for the purpose of the pre-lab, you're going to fill out this data table as if you were doing everything. Yay! Great. Um, okay, so let's just kind of get started. So for the 25 degrees Celsius, you'll notice that you have readings for the beads alone. And this is just sample data, remember? Okay, so you have readings for the beads alone, which that's just the glass beads. And then you have readings for the germinating peas. Okay, and then you have readings for the dry peas and beads. Um, one thing I want to make sure that you guys are aware of and that you don't confuse is the fact that um, the time readings, because you have them down here, so you've got 0, and then you've got 0 to 5, and then you have 0 to 10. Um, so I just wanted you to realize that this is cumulative now. So when we did the enzyme lab, and you were calculating the rate of an enzyme-catalyzed reaction, remember you were doing it in increments, so you would have done like 0 to 5, 5 to 10, and so on and so forth. But this is different. This one is cumulative. So by the end of the 20 minutes, then you guys will know the total amount of oxygen consumption. Okay, um, so here we go. Here's how to calculate it. Remember, you're reading the oxygen consumption levels using a pipette. Um, so if it's at zero, at 0.93, okay? And then from at five minutes, if it goes down to 0.91, which that's the way that you're going to be reading it. You're going to be reading the pipette backwards, essentially, just because of the way that it's set up and that might make a little bit more sense um, tomorrow when you guys actually get to practice the setup. But when you read it at 0.91, technically that would mean that, okay, um, the beads alone vial has consumed 0.02 milliliters of oxygen. But 
we know that that's not the case, right? Because that is the control after all, and it can't be due to metabolism. So this is the value that is eventually going to have to be subtracted out when we do the calculations for the germinating peas and the dry peas and beads. Okay, so let's talk about that. So if I do the calculations for the germinating peas from 0 to 5, you have 0.91 minus 0.84, which gets you 0 0.07. Okay, now here's where it matters. 0 0.07 minus the 0 0.02 from the beads alone gets you 0 0.05, okay? And then this number right here, this is called your corrected difference. And this is the number that you're going to graph, okay? So now if I do the same thing for dried peas and beads, you get 0 0.92 minus 0.89 gets you 0 0.03. But remember, I have to go back to... Um, the control. So 0 0.03 minus 0 0.02 will get me in the end a corrected difference of 0 0.01. Okay, and then this is the number you're going to graph. So if I go again from the increments of 0 to 10, um, in the control you have 0.93 minus 0 0.90 will get you 0 0.03. Right? And then if you do your germinating peas, 0.91 minus 0.77 will get you 0.14. But remember, 0.14 minus 0.03 will get you... I don't know if I can get a different color. I don't think so. Woo! Wait. Might have worked. Oh, no. Okay, sorry. I'll figure it out eventually. Okay. Um will get you 0.11, okay, and then 0.92 minus 0.87 for the dry peas and beads gets you 0 0.05, but then you have to subtract your control again, right, so then you're left with 0 0.02. Okay, um, so you're doing the same thing for the 10 degrees ice water bath, it's the exact same thing, and I actually just kind of already calculated the values for you guys, um, but make sure you check that out on your own. So what I encourage you is because there is an answer key. Some of you might have already even seen it or found it, but there is an answer key that I posted on the class website. It's under the Unit 3 Resources tab, like where you can find all the PowerPoints and everything. Um, so, But I really encourage you to just try to solve this out yourself and um, then check the answer key, okay? Um, and then once you've done that and you have your data table answers correct, then you can go and graph it and then you can do your rate calculations as well. But just remember that everything is cumulative in this, in this lab. So it always goes back to zero and then always remember to subtract your control value. Okay. All right. So Hopefully um, that helped you guys out, and you know if you have any other questions, you can you know you can always email me, or um, we can also talk about it in class tomorrow. So I'll see you guys tomorrow.